everyone, and welcome to Celebration Church. We're just going to take this moment to give God praise, and I just encourage you to join us.
gonna be afraid I'm not gonna be afraid I'm not gonna fear the storm You are greater And we're going to take this time in our service right now to lift up some prayer to God. And if you have a prayer need for anything at all, I encourage you, send it to our website, celebrationedmonton.com. If you've sent something there, I want to tell you right now, we are praying for you. In Psalms 92, it says, it's good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning and your faithfulness in the evening. You thrill me, Lord, with all you've done for me. I sing for joy because of what you've done. Oh, Lord, what great works you do and how deep are your thoughts. You know, I know it can be so easy for us to question God and to wonder what he's up to and why hasn't he responded to certain requests of ours yet. And I know that I might not always understand God. And that's a good thing. I don't want to serve a God that I fully understand. His, his ways are higher than mine. His thoughts are higher than mine. Here's what I do know, though. I know that He's the Most High. I know that His love is unfailing. I know that He is so faithful. And I know He's blessed me more times than I can remember. And right now, we are going to lift up some requests to that same God. And we are going to believe that our God will respond. We're gonna pray for everyone affected by this virus that they would fully recover. We're gonna pray for anyone who has any health needs at all right now 
I'm going to pray for anyone in uncertain financial circumstances. We're believing and lifting that up to God today. We're praying for all the leaders in our government. We're going to pray for our healthcare workers who are out there risking their lives for us. And we are going to pray that during this time, people will meet Jesus. And we know that our God will respond. God, we just thank you that you're so faithful. And we worship you today knowing that, that you are the most high God. God, that you've blessed us so much. And we can come to you today from a place of joy, knowing that you are such a great father. And God, I just pray for anyone who's, who's hurting, whether they're hurting mentally, they're, they have anxiety, or they're, they're stressed out, or they're frustrated during this season. God, I just thank you that your presence would be with them. God, we thank you that you're a, a miraculous God, that you still do miracles today, the miracles that we read about in the Bible, you still do things like that today. And so we ask, Lord God, that, that you would do miracles, Lord God. We ask that you would heal people. We just thank you that you sent your son and he was whipped so that we could be healed. His blood was shed so that we would be healed, that we wouldn't have to go through fr like things that hurt us, that God, that that's what you sent your son to do is to take that pain for us so that we would be healed. And so I pray for healing for so many people who have a need in their body, a physical healing or something that is going on in, in, in their heart or in their mind. We thank you that you would heal those needs, Lord God. I thank you that you would bless us, Lord. And God, that we are your children. And there's nothing that we could do to change that. We belong to you. And so today, we lift you up. You are our good Father, and we give you all of our praise today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hey, welcome to Celebration Church. We're so glad to have you with us today. We know that God's gonna speak to you through today's service. We just finished our time of worship together and are about to take in today's message. Before we jump into the message, I wanna share with you a quick video from this week of our church meeting in need in our city. Last week, we phoned the Edmonton Food Bank and just checked in to see how things were going. And of course, there was a lot of need, so we just decided Let's get some people together. Let's go to Costco. Let's fill up a truck. Let's just do what we can. So we are on our way to Costco right now. The care team is there waiting for us. And we're gonna load this truck up and take it to the food bank. The team just did amazing. We have loaded up the box and we are on our way to the food bank. Connect Groups are continuing to launch online this week, and if you haven't already done so, you need to sign up for one today. Jump over to celebrationedmonton.com slash connectgroups and you can view the full list of groups there. You can filter by group type or days of the week and find a group that works best for you this spring semester. Our lead pastor, Dennis Vardy, has an encouraging message he's ready to share with us. Let's jump into today's message right now. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Celebration. So good to be able to come into your home or wherever you happen to be watching today. What a privilege to be with you. You know, last week I, I just jokingly mentioned about people being at home in their pajamas, eating waffles and watching church. And sure enough, somebody sent me a picture of their husband doing that exact thing. You know, we're a culture that does not like waiting. Nobody celebrates waiting. Nobody Nobody walks into a waiting room, whether that be a, a dentist or a doctor or a car dealership or wherever, thinking, oh, I'm so looking forward to spending the next 90 minutes of my life sitting here. Uh, we, we are not into waiting. Nobody ever goes to Disneyland and celebrates the lineups. You know, people don't come back talking about how great it was that they could stand for two hours in a lineup before they got a two minute and 30 second ride uh, and, and then talk about how they just love waiting. In fact, 
In fact, we so don't like waiting, it's almost every week that somebody will throw up on Facebook the question, how long are the lineups at Costco? We don't celebrate waiting at all. There, there is no, uh, no time to wait. That, that's our culture. Uh, we are not into waiting. We are into things like microwaves, pre-cooked, warm-it-up meals. We are into drive-through. We are into there's no time to sit down and eat. we got to take it with us. Uh, we are into ordering online and Amazon Prime. We are into high-speed fiber, optic, Wi-Fi, Instant culture, instant everything. Waiting is not celebrated, but waiting is necessary. It's necessary. Today we're going to have a look at someone who knows something about waiting that we can learn from. And it's Joseph. Out of the scriptures, Joseph is his father's favorite son. In fact, it's evident because his father goes to Simon's and buys a multicolored coat from the extremely overpriced section of the store. You realize they do have that there. They don't put that label up, but it does exist. And so he buys this coat and he gives it to this one son, Joseph, and all the other sons, the Bible says, hated him because of it, uh, because he had so much favor with his father. Then to add insult to injury, he has favor from God. Joseph gets this dream where the sheaves of wheat are standing in a field and his is standing upright and all of his brothers are bowing down to him. And of course, he's only 17 years old. And so, you know, he's excited and I'm sure this kind of stroked his ego a little bit too. So he's got to tell everybody, well, that was a big mistake because the scripture says the brothers hated him even more. Then he has another dream where the sun and the moon and the stars bow down to him. And he goes and he tells mom and dad about this dream. And, uh, you know, they, they were not like overly excited about it, but considered it. And one day, Joseph's brothers are all working in the field. And dad sends Joseph out to see how things are going and uh, to check in on them. And when he shows up, they take his coat, they throw him in a pit. They sell him to slave traders who are going by. They dip his coat in goat's blood and then go back to their father Jacob and tell a lie and pretend that uh, Joseph was killed. Joseph is then sold into slavery and into Potiphar's house. He works in his home. He, he literally becomes the leader of all the slaves that are there. It's amazing how that Joseph experiences God's favor in an unfavorable circumstance. I believe that we can do the same. Potiphar's wife tries to seduce Joseph, but he refuses her advances. She then lies about him, and now he goes from being a leader in Potiphar's house into the king's prison. But once again, once again, Joseph acts like the leader that he is, and he becomes the leader of everything that's going on in the prison as a prisoner. Well, while he's there, one day, two people are sent to prison from the king, one being the baker and the other being the cupbearer. And they both have dreams. And so they share them with Joseph, and, and Joseph gives them the interpretation. He says to the baker, you know what, in three days you're going out of jail. That's the good news. The bad news is in three days you're going to die. And then he turns to the cupbearer and he says, hey, you know what, in three days you're going out of jail also and you're going to be restored to your job as the cupbearer for the king. And then he says this, as the cupbearer gets to leave uh, and gets to be taken out of jail, Joseph begins to sing remember me. He was ahead of his time. Yeah, he, he tells the cupbearer, listen, when you get back in the presence of the king, tell him about me because I am unjustly in this place. I should not be here. It's not right that I'm here. And sure enough, he doesn't do it. Joseph spent 13 years of his life waiting. He spent 11 years before he meets this cupbearer. He tells the cupbearer, remember me. And it took two years before the cupbearer finally spoke up. 
Joseph spent 13 years waiting for his life to get back on track. 13 years waiting for things to be normal again. 13 years waiting for God's promise, the dream that he had to come to pass. And, and he, he didn't uh, enter that season without, you know, plans. And uh, he didn't enter that season without vision. He didn't enter that season of his life without great expectation and enthusiasm about what was going to happen next. Just like you and I, we did not enter the season we're in right now, this stay-at-home season, if you will, without plans and vision and things to do and our January 2020 goals list, which I don't know if you still even have that or if you burned it or whatever. But, but now we find ourselves like Joseph, in this place of waiting, this place of waiting. Don't you feel like the waiting room is kind of a bit of a waste of time? Don't, don't you feel like, you know, the waiting room is this place where, you know, you're, you're just there and it's like, okay, what am I going to do now? I'm, I'm just in this place of waiting, you know, and you're sitting there and you're, you're listening to remix of 80s rock done with a cello, you know, it's always great music. And then, and then they've got something on the television, but the volume is so low that you have to read the closed captioning of some soap opera that's being played. And then you decide, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll read a magazine. So you pick up some magazine and you're looking through this thing thinking, my goodness, I would never have this thing in a subscription coming to my door. You decide finally, I'll just use my cell phone, do some work on my cell phone, but the Wi-Fi is terrible. And in our minds, when we're in a place of waiting like this, we just feel like this is such a waste of time. Once you get called, though, to whatever it is that you're waiting for, and you get to go to that, well, that's where the action is. That's what matters. That, that's where stuff is going to get done. My waiting time is over. Thank God. Now I finally get on with what it is I really want get, to get doing with my life, no matter what it is you've been waiting for. But you know what? The scriptures actually indicate something different about the waiting room. Psalms 105 and verse 17 says this. He sent a man before them. Joseph, who was sold as a slave, they afflicted his feet with fetters. He himself was laid in irons until the time that his word, that is the dream, came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The word of the Lord tested him. Waiting tests me. Joseph was tested by the the tension, if you will, of having a promise from God, having this expectation, but being kept in a place of waiting for it to be fulfilled. He was living in the tension. He was being tested by the tension. He has a promise from God about his future. He's got expectation, but he's in the waiting room, and there's a tension that exists. It's the tension between the real and the ideal. It's the tension between the new normal and the normal, between the present and the future, between what I have not and what I want to have, between limitation and my freedoms, between the present and the promise. He was in the waiting room. He had a promise from God for his future, He's, he's waiting for it, and the scripture says he was tested by it. Until the time that the word of the Lord came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. You know, when it says it tested him, it literally means this. He was being refined by smelting. That, that's what that word connotates. It, it's similar to what happens with metal. Metal uh, smelting is the process of separating metals from everything else that is around them. And through the use of heat, metal is now purified and made useful. The waiting room is the place of smelting for your life. You're feeling the heat, but it can actually refine you. And so Joseph came out a very different person at the end of his 13 years of waiting. 
You know, he, he went in as this privileged, impatient, arrogant teenager, but he came out a world leader. How do you pass then this, this test? You're being tested. How do you pass the test? James chapter 1 and verse 2 says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. You know, the place of waiting isn't a waste because the place of waiting is about producing a character quality called endurance in our life. Endurance, endurance. We're to embrace endurance. That's how we pass the test. We're to embrace endurance. Endurance is literally this. It is the capacity to continue to bear up under difficult circumstances. God has to develop this in us, the capacity to bear up under difficult circumstances. You know, there's a lot of value that is placed on endurance, isn't there? I mean, just looking from this one verse, the Bible says that if you'll, if you'll let endurance be developed into your life, that you will be perfect, complete, and lacking in nothing. Man, that's a, that's a really strong statement to make. It's amazing how much value gets put on this particular um, fruit of the Spirit. The Scripture refers to this character quality as a fruit of the Spirit. Uh, um, and having God in our life produces that fruit. But endurance, endurance has this weighty value of causing us to be made perfect, complete, and lacking in nothing. You know, the scriptures don't talk about all those characteristics that we can have in our life as being of that same value. I mean, it doesn't talk about joy and peace like that. It doesn't talk about generosity or serving or kindness like that. It doesn't talk about, in the same way that it talks about endurance, it doesn't talk about those things like that at all. Endurance gets talked about in a different way and gets a different light shed on it, and here's why. Endurance is what will make you win in life. Endurance is what will make you win in life. You know what? Without endurance, you won't bear up, you'll fold. And when life is difficult, um, you may want joy and you may want peace. I know I do. When, man, when things are difficult, you're like, man, I'd just like to be happy again. I'd like to be at peace again. But what you actually need is endurance. You know, when your business is struggling, you want peace and joy, but you need endurance. You know, when you're working through challenges of raising teenagers, for instance, you, you want some joy and peace, especially peace, by the way. But what you need is you need endurance. When you're fighting for your health and, and dealing with sickness in your life, you might want joy and peace, but what you need is endurance. When you're facing uncertainty like we are right now, where we're asking ourselves questions like, when do I get to go back to church? And, you know, when can I open up my business again? And, you know, when do I get to go back to work? And when can I travel and visit friends? And when can I go back to school? And, you know, when will all of this be over? And the answer is the same for all of it. I don't know. I don't know. So what do we need? We need endurance. We need endurance. We need the capacity to bear up under difficult circumstances. You see, you can make it with less peace in your life. And you can make it with less joy in your life. But you can't make it without endurance. That's why endurance gets the credits that it does of being perfect, complete, and lacking in nothing. This wasn't the most joyful time, I'm sure, in uh, the life of Joseph. Th this wasn't the most peaceful time in the life of, life of Joseph either. But what it most certainly was, was a time of building endurance. And endurance was what saw him through to receiving what God had promised for him. Endurance is how we win in life. Endurance is how we win in life. You know, the strange thing about endurance is it's only developed when it's demanded of us. You know, some things in life really, they're not developed because they're demanded. They're more like a decision. I think something like kindness. Kindness is just a decision. 
Kindness kind of gets an easy street compared to endurance. I mean, you just decide, you know what, I'm just going to be kind. Uh, you can be treated in an unkind manner, you know, have somebody that's not nice to you, whatever. But you can still rise above it and just decide, eh, I'm going to be kind anyway. Kindness is pretty much a decision. Uh, you know, we have Instagram slogans, you know, cool to be kind, uh, choose kindness, uh, try a little kindness. But it's not like that with endurance. It's not like that with endurance. Endurance only gets developed by having your life in a position where there's something that you have to endure. Life happens to you, and it demands that you endure it. And it's while you're being tested that you embrace endurance and that endurance actually gets developed in your life. Listen, waiting is the test that builds endurance. Waiting is one of those tests that builds endurance. Struggling through finishing college or university, you know, you got to endure. Maybe you're pushing to build a business and handling business challenges. You just have to endure. Maybe you're dealing with, uh, you know, the work of raising your family and you just got to endure through some things. Maybe it's about some difficult relationships in life that you're dealing with and it seems like the problem never goes away. You just have to endure. Listen, life happens and it demands endurance to deal with it, and that's literally how endurance gets developed in our life. Without endurance, though, you won't win. Without endurance, you'll quit, you'll drop out, you'll take the easy road, uh, you won't make the changes that you should make, you won't push through on your problems. Endurance is a must to win. You know, I think of just a, a couple of biblical examples about people that didn't step up with endurance. I think of Esau. Esau was struggling. Uh, you know, he went out hunting all day. He comes back. He's starving. He's, he's hangry. I mean, he is, he's really hungry. He's tired from hunting. His brother's there. He's cooking stew. And instead of enduring, he hands over his future to his brother, his birthright, in order to get a bowl of stew. All Esau had to do was just wait a little bit longer, you know, figure out some other place to get his food from. I mean, after all, he'd just come home. I'm sure there was more around that he could have ate instead of having to have the stew that was being cooked in that moment. Instead, what does he do? He doesn't endure. He hands over his future to his brother for a bowl of stew. You know, if you choose not to endure, then you can make decisions that will negatively impact your life going forward for a long time into your future. You can hand over your future to something you weren't willing to endure. So what do you need to do? You need to endure. Don't drop out of school. Finish the degree. Don't, don't, don't just, well, I should just marry and date this person. No, you need to wait for the right guy. You need to wait for the right gal. Don't, don't just spend because it makes you feel good plan your spending. Why? Because you need to endure, because you can make decisions that are literally lifelong in how they affect your future, and you don't want to make them because you weren't willing to endure. I think of 10 of the 12 spies that Moses sent in to uh, spy out the land. And 10 of them could not endure the fact that they were going to have to fight for what was ahead of them. And so they didn't make it to the promised land. Their kids did, but they didn't make it. You know, more joy and more peace wouldn't have helped those people. Um, just being kind or generous wouldn't have made a difference to those people. What was demanded of them was endurance, but they failed the test. They failed the test. Job is a great example, though, of somebody who passed it. Job chapter 5 and verse 11 talks about his life that, you know, after he'd lost everything and seen a lot of destruction in his life and even his health fail and everything else, you know, of course, he eventually gets that all back. But it says this about Job. It says, we count those blessed who endure. Isn't that a great statement? We count those blessed who endure. Uh, you have heard of the endurance of Job and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. Listen, Job got blessed. Why? Because he endured. Blessed who endure. Endurance is how you win. Joseph passed the test, Joseph endured, and he came into the promise that God had for his life. Well, endurance is how we handle our feelings while waiting. 
Endurance is also how we handle our feelings while waiting. You know, endurance is not just about the issue that you're facing, but it's also about how it makes you feel. You see, you're enduring right now. You're enduring being at home all the time, don't go to work, don't socialize. Uh, maybe you're enduring homeschooling, not by choice, but because you have to. Um, maybe you're enduring being laid off, uh, having a little less money uh, because of the situation. You, you don't get to go out to places that you normally would visit. You don't get to do some of the things you typically would do. And you're just in that place of waiting for things to change. And so that's all part of what you're enduring. But there's another side to it, and that is this. You're also enduring the associated feelings of all of these things. The lack of community and fellowship, the aloneness and even loneliness, the grief, the sadness, the stress, the anger and frustration, the anxiety that it brings, the sense of impatience or even fear that it brings. There's all these associated feelings and my guess is that this list would equally pertain to Joseph's life as well. It's not just the mechanics of what we're going through that we need to endure, but it's also the associated emotions. The associated emotions can actually become the biggest struggle to endure. And so we're enduring our feelings. We don't let them dictate our actions. We, we don't let them determine our decisions. We don't um, let them run our lives. We just bear up and we push against how we feel. We exercise endurance. Don't let your feelings lead your actions. This is one of the ways that we do it. We just make a decision. You know what? I can be feeling a lot of things and going through a lot of different emotions in this season, but I am not letting my feelings determine my actions. Just because you feel frustrated doesn't mean you should act out of that frustration. Just because you feel a sense of fear doesn't mean you should act out of your fear. Just because you're stressed doesn't mean you should act with impatience. Don't give life, by the way, to those feelings. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, just because you feel it and have a certain feeling about what you're going through doesn't mean that you need to nurture it. You say, How do you do that? Well, you do that by talking about it. If, if you, it's one thing to say, this is how I'm feeling. It's another thing to give life to it by constantly talking about it constantly complaining about it. When you're doing those things and broadcasting to everybody around you, posting on Facebook, you know, all the rest of it, listen, you're just giving life to those feelings. Don't give life to those things. Instead, give life to the kind of thinking and feeling that you know you need to have in this season. You know, it's in making choices that our feelings will actually, that our feelings uh, that we endure actually get, get changed. Making those right choices will change those things. You know, one of the things about, about waiting is that when we're in that place of the waiting room, and this is one of the feelings that I think is really a challenge, and that is this, that when we're in this place, we've come, we've got an appointment. And uh, apparently that appointment was just a suggestion because you come there and now you're like, hey, it's been 45 minutes and I, I've asked the lady at the counter now three times and, and I'm still not getting an answer. And, and there's this feeling that you get that's so unique and that is this, you have no control. You have no control over the situation. And, and not having control over the situation, over when am I getting out of here and getting on with what I want to get on with can be one of the biggest challenges and can be one of the most irritating things about it. And so we're in this place, we feel like we have no control. Joseph, when he was sold into slavery, had the very same thing going on. Here he is, he's been sold into slavery, he's got no control about getting out or when he's going to get out or any of those things, but he demonstrates a spirit of endurance because when things are out of control, you can still stay in control Endurance empowers us to stay in control when things are out of our control. You know what? We love to have control, don't we? I don't know about you. I like to be in charge. Uh, some of us are wired even more that way than others. But, you know, when things are out of control, it can be really stressful. Endurance 
is what's needed because we can't control everything. We can only control our response to it. That's what we can control. We can control ourselves. We have control over our attitude, our thoughts, our feelings, the fridge, our choices in the circumstance. You know, Viktor Frankl is a fellow who spent three years in a Nazi concentration camp, and he's a survivor, and he wrote a book when he came out called Man's Search for Meaning. <clears throat> he makes a couple of quotes in here that I thought were really great. He says, he says this, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. And then he made one more statement I wanted to share, and that is this. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. We are challenged to change ourselves. We are certainly nowhere near what Viktor Frankl experienced, absolutely not. But there is a parallel in the sense that we don't have control. We don't have control. Joseph, as well, kept himself in control when he couldn't control the things that were happening around him. You know, Viktor Frankl reflects on um, being three years in this concentration camp, and there was something particular that he noticed. He noticed that the people who made it didn't focus on when are we getting out. He said the people who were saying things like, oh, we'll probably get out by Christmas, those were the ones that didn't make it. Those, those were the ones who, who just got so uh, down in their hope that, that they, just, they just didn't survive. And so, in other words, they were focused on when are things going to change, something that they didn't have control over. But those who did make it simply focused on the present tense, what do I need to do today? You know, that's how Joseph endured as well. It's a key to endurance. Joseph just focused on, what do I need to do today? He's in Potiphar's house. He's a leader. That's just who he is. So what does he do? He gives leadership. He acts like a leader. He ends up becoming the leader of all the slaves. When he's in prison, he continues to just focus on, well, what do I do today? Continues to act as the leader that he is, and then he's entrusted with leadership in that place as well. Listen, endurance isn't about focusing on when will this change. Endurance is about being the person you need to be in the moment. What you need to be today. What do you need to be today for your family? What do you need to be today for your spouse? What do you need to be today for your boss and for yourself? In doing so, uh, it empowers us to endure because we're all about focusing on what is it I need to do today. You know, salvation is actually the product of endurance. Hebrews tells us that, that Jesus endured the cross for the joy set before him of bringing salvation to the world. Jesus bore up under an extremely difficult circumstance called the crucifixion. And he did so in order to provide redemption so that we could be brought back to God, brought back in relationship with God, that you and I could experience forgiveness and God's love and God's presence in our life and a fresh start and a new beginning, all of those things. We don't have to live our lives just continuing to have regrets, continuing to have shame, continuing to have hurts and habits in our, in our life. Uh, you know, all of those things that happen in life, we don't have to carry those things throughout our lives. Why? Because Jesus endured a cross and he provided for our forgiveness. He endured the cross so that you and I could be forgiven, so that you and I could forgive others, so that you and I could be healed, so that shame could be taken off our life and we could literally start life all over again. That's what salvation does for you and I. Jesus endured the cross for the joy set before him, and that joy is the fact that you and I can have a brand new start in life and have eternal life because of our faith in Him. I want to take a moment with you to pray. And maybe you've committed your life to Christ and walked away from it, haven't lived it out. Or maybe you've never prayed this prayer before. But in either case, I invite you to pray along with me. God wants to work in your world. You don't have to endure the consequences of sin throughout your life. Jesus endured the cross so that you could be set free. 
I want, won't you just pray with me? Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you paid for my past. I ask you to forgive me and I invite you into my life. I confess you as my Savior and the Lord of my life. And I'm going to follow you with all of my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, if, if you prayed that prayer with us, first of all, I want to say congratulations. You just made the best decision you'll ever make. Second of all, I want to invite you to communicate. If you would just text the word celebration to 76,000, that is text celebration to 76,000, We'll communicate back with you. We want to connect with you online, let you know what things we have available online that will help you grow and go forward in your walk with God. Well, as we've talked today about endurance and how endurance is so important in a season of waiting, you know, I just want to pray for everybody who's been watching right now. Lord, I, I pray for everyone who's watching. I pray for our endurance. Lord, I pray that when we're feeling the pressure of waiting that we would, we would endure. I pray that when we're tempted to be led by our feelings, that you would help us to endure. Lord, I pray that though there are some things that are completely out of control, Lord, let us control ourselves. Let us control our attitudes and our choices. And Lord, I pray that in this season, we would grow in endurance so that as the promise was stated, we would be perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. Let faith rise up, oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. Let faith rise up, oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me let faith rise up oh heart believe let faith rise up in me oh let faith rise up oh heart believe let faith rise up in me If you prayed that prayer today to receive Christ, congratulations. You just made the best decision that's gonna change the rest of your life. Now we wanna connect with you and let you know how we can help you as you begin your relationship with Christ. Right now, you can text the word CELEBRATION to 76000. Fill out the link and let us know that you received or rededicated your life to Christ. The link will also be posted in the chat from wherever you're watching. If you're participating in giving today, we wanna to say thank you for your generosity and your faithfulness. You can give online at any time on our website at celebrationedmonton.com. Church isn't just a place to attend, it's a place to belong. And if you're watching this during the 9.30 a.m. or the 11 o'clock service, we're hosting Next Steps class online right now. And we would love to have you join us for today's class. Follow the link posted to join in right now. Now, if you're not attending Next Steps, we have other opportunities for you to connect and meet people today. After every service, we'll have lobby groups that you can join. Lobby groups meet over Zoom meetings following each service and are available for you to meet and make new friends here at Celebration Church. So go jump in a lobby group right now. 
Connect Groups are continuing to launch online this week, and if you haven't already done so, you need to sign up for one today. Head over to celebrationedmonton.com slash connectgroups, and you can view the full list of groups there. You can filter by group type or days of the week and find the group that works best for you this spring semester. Have a great week.